Okay, good morning. So um, we had Yuri looking a little bit at what the future looks like, so I thought it might be interesting also to look back in the context of how we see Africa going. Yuri told us it's going to increase by fivefold in, uh, between now and 2000, 2040. So the sort of the way I've ch chosen to look back is to have a look um, at how North Africa evolved over the last 40 years and what what that might mean what that might mean to us. So I saw a couple of comments uh, recently on Egypt, one which said cement manufacturers hope cement demand will improve in Egypt. I think if you're a, in business, hope is probably not good enough as a, as a lever for making your future profits. And the second point, that, that cement prices are largely affected by the lack of gas supply, I think that's also true, also affected by the crisis. So I think let, let's, let's, ha let's have a l little look at should one invest in African cement? So in order to do that, we look at North Africa, which is in a different position, a very much more mature position than Sub-Sahara. And if we look at the evolution of kilograms per capita over the last 20 or 30 years, we see we've had a phenomenal run-up. It's not been smooth. There was, a, there was a period of stagnation in the 90s. And then an amazing run-up to where we're looking at 670 kilograms per, per capita average, which is a very respectable um, amount. And if you compare that to Africa, where it's probably around about 100, it shows there's a, there's a great deal of potential. And Yuri earlier put up his, his, uh, his famous slide on the evolution of markets. And sorry, that's not really well focused. But um, each one of those dots represents a, a year in time. And each one of the colors is the respective markets. And so if we look, there are two very distinct sets of markets. The emerging markets, where you see all of those dots just going up almost vertically, and this is GDP per capita by kilograms per capita, and the developed markets where one sees a mess of dots going in all sorts of directions. So we need to take, take care when we get near the top there. So if we just look a little bit more specifically, MENA, right up there, right at the top, almost 700 kilograms per capita. Eastern Europe had a good run up, former Soviet Union, good, but perhaps not so smooth. Southeast Asia, amazing run up. And right down here at the bottom, we see India and Sub-Saharan Africa, where barely on the, off the starting grid, but doubling of in the last 20 years, but barely off the starting grid at 100, 100 and something kilograms per capita. So this is what I call an insurance policy. And maybe I should just sort of say that this, this presentation is really looking as a cement company or as an investor in what should you be doing, because ultimately we're all here working for some business or other, aiming to make money and a, and a return on the shareholders' investment which is sometimes forgotten in cement, I should add. So this is our insurance policy. Growth becomes our fundamental insurance policy if we choose to invest in Africa. Doesn't mean we're going to make money, because as all insurance policies, it comes with some exclusions, some small print. So MENA has been a beautiful 30-year ride for most people. And we're going to have a look at that and what it, what it, what it means in terms of the context of Africa. And you still need to know when to get in there and when to get out, what markets to go in, what markets to, to, to avoid. And I think portfolio management is not a popular thing. Big companies don't like portfolio management. It's got eight big HR issues. At the same time, it's very important. And I think you can focus all you want on the micro in cement, but if you don't get the macro right, you will never make money. And you only have to look at Semex, Holcim, Lafarge, Heidelberg over the last few years, their big investment decisions have pretty much bankrupted their companies or brought them close to it.